2019 in our region of the country. We saw some of the worst green snap and lodging issues in corn we'd ever seen. We believed a lot of that had to do with the late planting, the tremendous growth that we were getting at and just at the wrong time, a huge wind ended up coming through, flattening a lot of stuff. Well, unfortunately, we've seen just a little bit of that here again in 2020. We want to talk today about what green snap and lodging really is and how you can prevent these things from causing major yield losses on your farm. When you think about how a corn plant grows, each day it's capturing sunlight, it's pulling in water and nutrients through the root system, and it just keeps getting taller and taller. And we oftentimes think about knee-high corn and how quickly it gets to shoulder high or taller than us corn. It happens very, very fast. So that plant is accumulating so much material so quickly. Well, what happens is by the time we get to the middle of the night, that plant is has brought all these things in and it's ready to start hardening off cells of new growth. And it takes a little bit of time for all that to happen. So we need that evening time to be not so windy because the plant is full of water and not hard yet on those new cells. So by eight, nine, 10 o'clock in the morning, those cells have started to harden off and the plant is pretty secure to take on the wind of the day. When you get storms that come over the middle of the night, that's oftentimes where we see this green snap because we've got cells that just haven't had a chance to harden off yet. So with green snap, it's where the plant actually breaks off. Just lodging isn't necessarily so bad. Lodging is when the plant tips over to some degree. With green snap and lodging, probably the biggest thing I'm always talking to farmers about is having adequate fertility. Potassium by far and away is number one in the plant for stock strength. Beyond that, it's manganese and it's copper. So if you're seeing consistent lodging and green snap issues, look at your levels of potassium. We'd like those around four to 8%, something like that. On our farm, quite frankly, we're shooting now for 7% base saturation K. Also, you have to have adequate parts per million. If you have sand, you could have 7% base saturation K and very low parts per million. So keep your parts per million up and your base saturation K up. With manganese, we'd like to see those levels 20 to 40, at least on a Midwest Labs DTPA test. Malik 3, we'd like much higher than that. And and then finally with copper, we're probably shooting for three parts per million. So with those three nutrients, those are the real keys. Make sure that you've got those in high amounts in your soil. If you don't, you're just much more prone to both lodging and green snap. I like the focus on fertility because really a lot of it comes down to fertility. With corn hybrids, they're always going to have a period of susceptibility to green snap or lodging. Oftentimes it starts at about V9 and goes up through tassel, but some hybrids it may be one or two growth stages, others it may be even broader than that. It may start at V7 and we see something very early in the season. So hybrids are, are an easy target because oftentimes as farmers we see, well, this hybrid lodged worse than this one, or this hybrid had more green snap than this one. It's important to look at more farms than just your own because chances are you're not the only person that planted that hybrid. You could drive five miles away and see, oh, well, when that hybrid was two leaf stages ahead, we had no problem with the same storm, or when the rows were facing north and south instead of east and west, or vice versa, we may have had no issues. So before you start blaming the hybrid, just know every hybrid is susceptible to lodging and green snap. Some do have a little wider window than others. The other thing that I would say is planting population is huge. As you lower planting population, you're just gonna see less green snap and lodging. And part of that comes back to fertility. If each plant has more area of the soil it can now pull nutrients from, well, obviously it's going to pull more nutrients in. So you gotta think a little bit about what your planting population is, what your overall risk is for green snap and lodging, and what you have for soil fertility. So let me put it to you this way. If you have low soil fertility, don't be bumping your planting population just because you're hearing seed corn companies say, well, the best farmers are getting really high yields at 36,000 population. Look, if you've got 2% base saturation K, you can't plant 36,000 population. Maybe 26,000 population would be much, much more appropriate. You gotta take a look at what 
every factor is out there and weigh these things out. And sure, sometimes you're going to luck out. Sometimes the wind doesn't come, everything's fine. But what we're talking about most of the time is trying to protect ourselves here as farmers from loss in some of these really tough years. And it might only be one out of five, one out of 10, but we got to take a look at this and say, all right, what can I do to reduce my susceptibility to these high winds, to green snap and to lodging? Last thing I would say is green snap is an insurable event. So if green snap in your area is very common, or if you're planting some risky hybrids on a regular basis, take the insurance out. It may be well worth the money for you. Talk to your insurance agent to find out the details. Well, green snap and lodging, unfortunately, can be a real problem on the farm. Another thing that can be a real problem is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? <laughs> 